All right. Hello, this is uh, Gregory J. Smalley, and I'm here with my colleague uh, Giles Edwards with the bow tie. And uh, we're here to interview Noel David Taylor in the green shirt uh, about his movie, his debut film, which he wrote, directed, and starred in, called uh, Man Under Table. It's a surreal satire uh, about a sarcastic young filmmaker uh, in trying to make his first script in the indie world, uh, where all his peers' careers seem to be going a little bit faster than his. And um, so just as, a, as an introduction, can we, would you care to give us some uh, information on your own background and how this project came? Yeah, um, so I have been uh, making short films pretty much, you know, as long as I can remember and uh, just uh, moved to LA about six years ago, um, kind of just bounced around trying to find a place, um, got kind of, I'm frustrated and, and, and embroiled in this, um, you know, indie film scene that I'm sort of satirizing in this film. And uh, I just, start, you know, just started writing it uh, with, with um, little experiences and, and uh, uh, frustrations in that arena. All right. Well, and for my next question, now this question may, uh, a no is a perfectly reasonable answer to to both parts, it's a two-part question. And the question is, can you explain why you named the movie uh, Man Under Table? And the follow-up is, did you ever consider naming it Guy Under Table? Uh, I, it's funny, Man Under Table was the first part of this film. Like a, me and a friend of mine were just joking around one day, uh, sending <laughs> fake movie titles back and forth. And we landed on that one. And for some reason, it just stuck with me. I was, I think, kind of starting the script at the time. And I, I just thought it was funny. Um, and yeah, and there is the, a, you know, a part of the movie where, where um, the, the character Gerald keeps saying guy under table, um, which is almost the titular line, but not quite, yeah. <laughs> All right, hey, Giles, do you have some questions? I, I hope so, yes, uh, hello. Uh, um, I've got a list of things here. I guess I'll start with the most prominent one on the top. You are writer, director, producer, and star of this feature. So obviously a very uh, personal film for you. And as you just mentioned, talking about a number of your personal experiences hashed out in a semi-fictionalized way. Uh, of these four ways, four avenues you approach this, which was your favorite to be doing? Like, did you like to be acting more? Did you enjoy the direction? Or is this all just one ball of uh, output? Yeah, you know, I think it, it's a combination. You know, I, I, I because I started uh, sort of just messing around with, with making short films when I was a kid, I, I kind of always used each part of it to aid the other part. So for certain projects, you know, my own projects, I feel like it, it's really hard for me to separate those things, you know, I, I they kind of lend to each other. Um, but more and more, especially starting with this project, I think I, I kind of just enjoy the writing. It's just the, it's just the, you know, it's the part where there's just slightly less stress. You can do it in your own time. No one's around. Uh, yeah. It Except in the experience of the main character there, yeah. I suppose it uh, lends itself to guess because he always introduces himself as, I'm writing a movie, and that uh, obviously reflects your uh, thoughts there. Uh, I guess a brief follow-up question in that vein. Did you ever think to cast someone else as you? Oh, yeah. Um, I, you know, when I started building this uh project i i kind of intended on doing a lot more outsourcing i didn't want to shoot it i certainly didn't want to shoot it um the uh you know the people i had around me i couldn't really get on board that i had one dp in mind and he said no and i was like i oh, forget it i'll just do it myself and then um as far as the actors go yeah i definitely thought about um putting somebody else as the lead so I could 
concentrate on other stuff, but I think by design, the project kind of um, had to be done when it could be done. And I was, you know, the obvious choice to, <laughs> I was free, I was available. So I hired myself. Very cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's very cheap. <laughs> uh, I guess that uh, leads nicely to my next question. Um, you seem a rather uh, easygoing, affable fellow, at least in these first uh, few minutes or so. How many parallels would you say there are between you as you actually you and the uh, not so charismatic individual that dominates the screen in Man Under Table? Yeah, <clears throat> unfortunately, we do have a lot in common. Uh, I think the you know the main joke, like you mentioned uh, about the writing. The main joke for me in this film is that you never see him actually physically write anything. He just talks about writing, uh, which I think is is something that you know is true of any, of any writer. Really, you know, you you want to write more, you want to be doing stuff, but um, but yeah, I, I kind of tried to uh, put every put the worst qualities of myself in this character. Um, I really wanted him to be, you know, impatient and, and petulant and, and shiftless and kind of useless as a, as an entity. I mean, he's mostly concerned with what other people are doing and, um, very irritable. Um, and I just thought, you know, I hate those qualities in myself. So I thought it'd be funny to, you know, have this anti-hero type of version, um, that you, you know, I was surprised, I, I hope this comes across, I was surprised with how much I started to relate to him and like him, even though the, the point was never that. <laughs> well, I, I'd say of the um, character options in the movie, he was definitely the most relatable and quite possibly the most likable because everyone surrounding him is, uh, well, one dimensional sounds a bit too flattering for them and, you know, uh, not not to, you know, have that be a criticism of the characters as they're written, because they're quite obviously, uh, as uh, Greg mentioned in his review, caricatures of caricatures is sort of, you know, pushed to the logical extreme for them. But he sort of comes across as, yeah, you're not going to really want to probably spend too much time with him. But of the people there, it's like, okay, this this person actually seems to have something going on inside and thoughts that maybe conveyed badly but at least might be worth conveying yeah and i think you know with with indie films you're kind of gonna go into them or a lot of people are gonna go into them apprehensively uh and you're gonna you're gonna sort of have this running commentary like oh, what is this scene you know what is this person doing i don't care and so i tried to sort of let him say those lines for you um, he's just as miserable being in this movie as maybe, um, you know, somebody who doesn't like this sort of thing is watching it. <laughs> yeah, it's a good preempt to say, like, oh, no, no, the movie hates itself as well. It's okay. <laughs> um, but I guess, yeah, to get uh, maybe some more background, you said you've done shorts all the while. I know you have a, uh, an interview on the Slam Dance website where you explore some of these, but uh, if you could just maybe quickly talk about you know, some uh, influences you have, styles you've enjoyed uh, cinematically to give a foundation for the look that you achieve? Yeah, I mean, I really love, uh, you know, classic films. I, I like the ones that don't quite hit. I like the, the, the very obvious sets and, and uh, you know, kind of cheap looking films of the 50s and 60s. Um, you know, even, even like... Uh, the, the unwatchably bad ones. Uh, I, I love the way that they look. So I, I wanted to get a sort of cheapness involved in this one. But um, and as far as like actual serious um, influences, um, I, I really love um, Roy Anderson, somebody who's who's been uh, in recent years like one of my favorite filmmakers. His his, uh, his films are insanely beautiful. Um, you know, obviously, uh, the, any sort of, you know, uh, Yurthos and, and uh, you know, these indie people, Miranda July, and, you know, people that you see sort of doing off, sort of, um, you know, 
very uh, ambitious, but, but indie films. Um, but for the most part, I don't, I don't absorb too much newer stuff. I, I, I like to stick in the arena of like 50s through 90s, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and, uh, to get to a couple of visuals questions I had for you, the uh, opening credits on spool over this, um, I guess, sort of gyrating light pattern that we eventually learn the source of that. Uh, I was wondering if there was any um, particular thought behind that sort of weird uh, gelatinous mood setting that sort of, you know, shiny goo, and then it scales into the movie, and then we find out what was going on there. Man, it's such a good question, um, to which I'll probably disappoint in my response. Uh, I think it was one of those things where when I was sort of trying to figure out what this movie was about before I wrote it, in the beginning process of writing it, I was uh, sort of transfixed by by a credit card <laughs> that I was uh, observing the reflection of, and I just thought um, if I could, I don't know, put some sort of abstract idea of. I liked. I just like the concept of, like you said, like having something that you can't tell what it is. And then we zoom out later and then you figure out what it is. Um, and it's not necessarily the crux of the film. It's not the rosebud moment. No. It's some throwaway entity. And I don't know why it stuck with me. And uh, yeah, I just, I really wanted to start it in an abstract color way. Cool. Yeah. That, that's a reasonable enough answer. You're, <laughs> you're the fi filmmaker and I, you know, will defer to your authority in this regard. I, I only watch these things, so. That's a, that's a lot less of a thing. Um, but speaking of things, uh, I had a question sort of uh, personally. Uh, hydraulic fracturing, is that really that big a hang up with the crowd that you were found yourself maneuvering through? Because Not at all. Oh. Um, fracking was, and you know, I still kind of go back on this. I had like a, you know, a little post-it note of like five hot button topics. And I think I chose that one because of that reason. Like, I don't think anybody's that um, really moved by that issue. Mm. Um, and so I think it maybe illustrated better the sort of, you know, preempting of, of, of an issue to move your own political and, or not political, you know. Uh, Social, political. Yeah, yeah. yeah. For what it's worth, I, I thought that that was a hilarious choice, to be honest. Every time somebody says it's about uh, identity politics and fracking. I, and I, and I, where the two meet, you know? <laughs> this is nonsense, yeah. Um, uh, how much longer do we have you for, since it is technically uh, 20 after right now? I'm, I'm available, if, it's a, if you're asking me. I don't. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Yeah, I have, yeah, I just have a couple more things here. Um, there was a sudden uh, twist at the end, um, after I guess the climax of sorts, where it moves very heavily into a film noir kind of setting. Um, I was kind of curious about this because that's one of the only moments of success in the film. And film noir has a long history of protagonists not achieving success. Was there a maybe a particular movie you were thinking of where there's that sort of noble exit or? Well, I mean, you know, double identity is maybe not the best choice, oh. but uh, that was something that um, was floating around in my head a lot. I mean, I love all those, those films, but um, I think I wanted to sort of maybe superimpose that this isn't um, this isn't the, the the happy ending, but it's also not. It's all it's kind of a death, you know, uh, which I guess was the the concept of that. There's a there's that that section of the film is kind of about death, uh, yes. birth. Yeah. <laughs> At the funeral, yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> about that. Yeah. 
Um, okay, yeah, because that was uh, one of the science things. And also, I guess uh, another quick style question. There's a kind of obvious color scheme. You have the uh, prevalence of green, obviously, uh, in the um, post something wasteland of uh, unfashionable LA. Uh, was that something that uh, came into the script, possibly in regards to the uh, current nonsense of this past year, vis-a-vis -vis unbreathable air, or have you? Did you always imagine gas masks and uh, fumes? That's a really strange uh, thing to sit with, but uh, we. we you know, finished shooting this movie before the pandemic hit. And uh, the concept was, you know, supposed to be sort of this hit the nail on the head. Um, LA is toxic, you know. If you, <laughs> if you move around LA, you are breathing in poison. <laughs> now that surprises me. I, I assumed that having seen the masks and everything, that it was topical. So. It was really strange because, you know, I thought if we did live in a world where the air was unbreathable and everybody had to wear masks, the first thing that would happen would be that, you know, places would start making like fashionable masks. And so I wanted to design my own masks that were, you know, had their own unique thing for each character. And, uh, you know, sure enough, it's... <laughs> yeah, I quite like the one that allowed smoking. That was... Uh, <laughs> Well, I just knew hipsters would need to still be able to smoke. <laughs> it's definitely, definitely true. Um, let me take a, just a quick look here. Oh, uh, I had a question about uh, the slam dance parameters. Uh, from my understanding, there are certain limitations to uh, them accepting. How did you end up in their um, sites and uh, what? Uh, I have no idea. I, um, you know, I submitted to them. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody, you know, I, that I, that is um, in my small circle, you know, I know some people are, are friends and maybe somebody said something about it, but I, um, it was a total shock to me. I just blind submission. Um, yeah. Well, speaking of uh, blind submissions, uh, do you, uh, have, are there any current plans for, um, shall we say, the post-festival distribution for this? No plans. Uh, you know, just trying to talk to uh, some other fests right now and see who else wants it and uh, just going to see where it goes. Hopefully okay. it'll end up somewhere. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, <laughs> I definitely very much enjoyed it. And I guess uh, may as well wrap this up with a question that uh, I like Before to ask. That. What's that? Before oh, you do that, yeah. Jazz, let's just Sorry. ask him. So, but uh, one parting question before Giles gets to his traditional parting question. Um, just wondering if you are already thinking about your next project already, or if you're just going to be working on Man Under Table promotion for a while. Yeah, I, um, I, I just finished writing a feature that I, I would really love to uh, get started on soon. Um, it's slightly more ambitious, uh, so I'm gonna see what what rolls out with that. And in the meantime, uh, just a couple shorts on the docket. And yeah. Any uh, any hint about what, without divulging the plot, but like, is it a, would it fit into a genre? Or uh, yeah, I think it's. Um, it's a it's a drama. It's a it's a you know it's a maybe sort of Cohen Brothers esque dark comedy drama. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe so bold. <laughs> so. Thank you for catching me, Greg. I I normally ask that as well, but nothing was in my uh, my paper here about that. So, uh, but to dive now into uh, my typical closing question: What's your hometown, and do you have a restaurant you can recommend? Mm. Um, I would consider Portland, Oregon, probably more my hometown than anywhere I've ever lived. Um, and up until recently, I would have said the bonfire, but they went out of business. Uh, the, the, my favorite restaurant in Portland is probably the Hilt. If you're ever in Portland, North Portland, it's, uh, they got good burgers there. 
<laughs> thank you very much for the lead and thank you very much for taking time here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, good luck on your future projects. And hopefully we'll be reviewing some more of your movies in uh, just a few years. I'd love that. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. Take care. Uh,